What is up, everyone? Today is Tuesday, which means that it's time for another live Q&A all about drop shipping. As always, I'm your host, Paul J. Lipsky. Here in this channel, I talk a lot about different ways to make money online, but we really focus on drop shipping onto different marketplaces like eBay and Facebook Marketplace. So if you checked out some of my videos or you're a student in one of my courses and you have some more questions that you need some clarification on, that is what these live streams are for. I do them every single week on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So feel free to join and ask any questions that you have. So before I jump into the questions, we already have a bunch of them in the chat. I'm starting a new segment here on the live streams called Dropshipping News, for lack of a better name. If someone thinks of a better name, please let me know. But what I want to do is like every week, I'm paying attention to what's happening in the world of e-commerce and anything that could affect us as drop shippers. So I thought it'd be really helpful to update all of you on what those things are that I think are important and to keep in mind. So I'm gonna start doing that. And I have some big announcements this week, some big stuff that I've seen in the news. So first of all, let me go ahead and share my screen. And I think I can, can I add myself in here somehow? Um, like this, I think. Yeah, there we go. So the first news I wanted to share with you all has to do with a big drop shipping software company called AutoDS and another one called DSM Tool. So if you've ever used some of this software, this is what allows us to basically automate our drop shipping stores. It can list products for you into your eBay store. If there's price changes on your supplier's website, it will update the prices on the websites. It can even do automatic order fulfillment, different things like that. Each software company does something different. There's overlap, obviously. But these were two of the big companies, DSM Tool and AutoDS. Now, I've used DSM Tool in the past, probably like four or five years ago is the one I used to recommend. But then AutoDS came on the scene and they were really innovative and I really liked their stuff. So I made the switch over to AutoDS. Now that's what I've been using for about five years now. Well, DSM Tool just acquired AutoDS, it looks like. So if you go over to the DSM Tool website now, it now says it's owned by AutoDS. And if you're a DSM Tool member, you have to switch and go over to AutoDS. So I give this information to anyone who is a DSM Tool user currently. They will have to switch over to AutoDS, but AutoDS told me they have a team dedicated to making this transition as smooth as possible. So just click on here where it says join for free, and I think they'll help walk you through the entire process of moving over to AutoDS and bringing all your products with you. And then I think there's some more information here about, about why this transition happened and different things like this, and just kind of comparing AutoDS to DSM tool, kind of showing that AutoDS has a lot more features available than D DSM tool does. And it's available to sell on a lot of different platforms as well. So yeah, like I said, AutoDS is the one that I use. If you want to sign up for it, I do have an affiliate link for them, which is in the description of my videos down below. But if you're a DSM tool user, you're going to have to switch over. Another update that I have for you is if your sales yesterday on eBay were slow, well, it might not be your fault. eBay had another glitch yesterday and that glitch was reported by lots of buyers and sellers primarily people that were using the the app on their phone. It seems like the iOS app in particular it doesn't seem like it was really impacting Android users. But what this means was that people were trying to buy stuff on eBay using their iPhone app and they weren't able to, they're running into issues. So if you saw some slow sales yesterday, that might be why, or if you were trying to access eBay from your, your iPhone app and you weren't able to, that might've been why as well. Um, there's been a lot of reports lately of different retailers having all sorts of issues in terms of revenue, decreased revenue, lower uh, uh, lower income than they forecasted or projected. So there's been a lot of that lately. So Home Depot, which is a company that I drop ship a lot from, I know a lot of other drop shippers do as well, they missed their revenue mark by a lot. It was their worst revenue miss in about 20 years. So what does that mean for us as dropshippers? Well, there's 
two ways that this usually goes when a company starts to lose revenue. On the one hand, you have a company like Bed Bath & Beyond, where they are closing down a lot of their stores. And you've seen companies like Toys R Us that just went completely out of business. So that's not ideal for us as dropshippers when something like Toys R Us happens where it just completely goes out of business because that means less sources for us to dropship from. But when we see companies do things like have layoffs or close physical stores, that doesn't affect us too much. But what does affect us in a positive way is what we've seen is that when companies aren't hitting their numbers, they kind of loosen up their rules a bit. They do everything they can to bring in more revenue. So for instance, we've seen eBay in the past where they were kind of strict against drop shippers on eBay. They were kind of moving towards a situation where they were making it less and less um, easy for us to drop ship on eBay. Then they missed some revenue numbers and they pulled back on that. I think they realized, okay, you, you know, drop shippers, they make up a big part of eBay and we can make money from them. So let's pull back. Let's not treat them so badly. Let's let them sell here because they're going to make money and we're going to make money as well. So we see things like that happen as well. So this can always mean like in Home Depot in the past, it was pretty easy for us to get discounts on Home Depot. That's not true anymore. Maybe with something like this, where they're not hitting their forecast, it will become true again, where they're going to try to squeeze every dollar out and they're going to offer discounts again in the future coming up. Uh, kind of speculation there, we just don't know how they're gonna react, but that's often what we see with these companies. And I mentioned Bed Bath & Beyond as well, because that is one store that I know some people drop ship from, and I've certainly drop shipped from them in the past. And then finally, if you are a seller on Amazon, so selling on Amazon, not drop shipping from Amazon. If you're selling on Amazon doing FBA or drop shipping there, then just be aware that starting June 27th, there is a new law, so they will have to potentially get more verification information from you. Now, I looked at it and it looked like the information that you had to disclose was information that I've already disclosed to Amazon that they've already asked for. So I don't think for most people, they're actually going to be getting more information or requesting more information from you, but maybe for some sellers. And that's all the news that I have for this week. So let's get into the questions now. How long have you been drop shipping, says Geo. Oh, you guys don't need to see me twice. What age did you start? So I started January 2017, which was six years ago now at this point, right? So at that point, I was in my late 20s, 28 or 29 years old when I started. So for some people, that's late. For some people, that's, you know, average. Um, Corette says, I have my faves in searching for winning items from those you teach in Facebook Marketplace course. To date, what's your favorite way you find winners for Facebook Marketplace? Ah, so what Corette's talking about is inside my Facebook Marketplace dropshipping course, I teach several different ways to do product research. In other words, several different ways to find products to sell on Facebook Marketplace. They, the reason I give you so many is because you have to try all of them to kind of see which one works the best for you, depending on your strengths and which one just kind of works for you. Um, probably the easiest one is to look for items that are coming from eBay. It's kind of the, the easiest to teach, the easiest to learn, uh, easiest kind of system to implement. But there's another technique in there that I teach only to students in the course. I've never talked about it here on YouTube. And that's a technique where you actually find items that are doing really well for Shopify dropshippers. Because those are items that tend to have sort of like a wow factor or really catches people's eyes. And that's what really works on Facebook Marketplace. So that takes more time and energy and focus to find those items. But once you do, those items tend to sell much better than any of the other ones. So that would be my answer to your question, Cred. Um, Gerardo says, how do you keep track of your sales, profit, and losses? I just hit 100 sales. I want to start tracking all this for when I have to pay taxes. 
So congrats, man. That's awesome. 100 sales, well on your way. So congrats on that. Um, there's there's two different ways I do this, really. So when it comes to taxes, you should really speak to your CPA and ask them, or your bookkeeper, and ask them what they need. Because what I do is we don't track items on an item by item basis, or we don't track rather income on an item by item or sale by sale basis. We look at things in the aggregate, in the total. We look at how much we had coming in from like eBay in a month, then what our total eBay fees were for that month, what our total expenses were for that month that we can get from our credit card in terms of product fulfillment and different things like that. And then whatever's left over is profit. So that's the way we look at it for bookkeeping purposes, kind of like that macro agri- uh, you know, aggregate right there. The If you wanna track each item individually, then you would need a spreadsheet to do that. Uh, it, it gets very, very tedious to do that, especially when you get more sales. And after a while, it just doesn't make sense. Once you know your numbers, you know, hey, if I sell this at X markup, we're gonna make money on it. And if you don't, then then you lose money or not make as much as you wanted to. So after a while, you will know those numbers better. So you won't have to keep track of every single item one by one. You could also look at AutoDS because AutoDS kind of gives you a breakdown of that as well, but it's not as accurate because it doesn't have all the information like how much you spent on the item. Hey, what's up, Odima? Thanks for being here. Thanks for being present. Hey, Johnny, how you been, man? So glad you stopped by. Where in the world are you? Johnny's always globetrotting. So uh, kind of curious where he's at today. Where do, do you get a tracking number on AutoDS? Well, my question for you is what you need the tracking number for, what it is that you're trying to do. Now, AutoDS has a feature where it can actually automatically order items for you from certain suppliers. So let's say you list up an item that is available on Amazon, you list it for sale on eBay. It sells, AutoDS, if you set it up beforehand, can actually automatically order that item from Amazon for you. And because Amazon doesn't give you a tracking number that you can upload into eBay, like a USPS or UPS tracking number, they will actually convert the Amazon tracking number into a usable tracking number automatically and upload that to eBay for you. So you set that up and that's all automated by them. If you're not using AutoDS to order items for you, then let's say you fulfill it from Amazon and Amazon gives you one of those Amazon tracking numbers. Well, now you have to go through the process of getting it and turning it into a usable tracking number. And for that, you could look at a service like Track Taco, uh, which can get you those tracking numbers. Hey, what's up, Miss Mia Mia Meow? Glad you're back. Hope you're doing well. What's up, Mike? Good to see you again. Lee Thompson says, can Amazon ban your account for drop shipping to eBay? So Amazon doesn't do that but they do ban Amazon Prime accounts for drop shipping to eBay. So if you use an Amazon Prime account, don't use it for drop shipping. Set up a new Amazon account and that seems to work for drop shipping, but the Prime accounts don't. Next week, I have a video coming out. I think it's next week, maybe it's this week. I'm not quite sure, honestly. I have a video coming out all about the best suppliers to use for drop shipping. And I talk about things like that. So do make sure you check out that video. I think it actually does come out Thursday of this week. Maybe it came out this morning. I, I don't know. Um, I can't keep track of when my videos are coming out. So look out for that video because that will give you a lot of information into the best best um, suppliers with the best uh, kind of drop shipping policies and if they do things like uh, ban accounts and things like that. Um, Okay, oops, accidentally opened up my calendar. Okay, Mike says, I think it's better when there's more competition, it keeps companies liable since consumers have a choice. Yeah, I agree 100%, Mike. Um, these monopolies that things like Amazon are creating, uh, it's not what we want, right? We want the competition. We wanna see 
them compete on pricing, make their shipping faster, better customer service, different things like that. So I agree 100 percent. Millennial Money Mom says, hey, do you also do Amazon FBA? Yeah, I do. I, I don't teach how to do it because honestly, I learned everything I know about Amazon FBA from my buddy, Steve. You, you may have seen his channel, Rake and Profit. His method is a method I use. I can't, I can't bring anything new to the table there uh, because I just follow exactly what he teaches um, in his, his eBay to Amazon course. Uh, I'm not sure what you're saying here, Debbie. Maybe you can reword it. I think there's a typo in there, maybe. Hey, what's up, Raptor? Thanks for being here. All right, what is going on, Debbie? Debbie, if you have your settings set up correctly in like AutoDS and you're listing your products correctly, you shouldn't be losing money. That shouldn't be happening. So I would really check your settings on AutoDS. If you're ever losing money, I would go in and check your settings and whatever software you're using, make sure they're set up correctly because you should not be losing money on sales. And if you do, it should be really rare. Mike says, I've been doing this since 2019. The slowdown is noticeable in my sales. As dropshippers, we can list more items to make up the difference though. Yeah, absolutely. I think at the end of last year, a lot of e-commerce sellers and a lot of people selling products online saw things slow down. I think this had a direct correlation to inflation and a lot of people spending less money, certainly less than they were in the couple of years before that with, with uh, COVID and not being to go out, not being able to go out and shop and different things like that. But the cool thing about drop shipping is that as markets shift, as customers buying habits shift, we can so easily adapt as drop shippers. So imagine that we're selling, I don't know, I'm thinking of like the fidget spinner craze that was a while back. If we're selling fidget spinners, they're doing really well, but all of a sudden a lot of competition comes in for them, which is certainly what happened. Now all of a sudden your fidget spinners aren't selling as well. Well, imagine if you had bought $200,000 worth of fidget spinners and they're sitting in a a warehouse that you can't sell them anymore and actually make a profit because there's so much competition. We don't have to worry about that as drop shippers. We sell fidget spinners when they're popular and when we can, and when they become too saturated, you move on to some other products. If we have sales that are slowing down, we just add more products. Most companies that have slower sales have to cut back on things like new products. They can't risk adding new products because that costs them money to do that. It doesn't cost us money as drop shippers, or if it does, it's very little, you know, just some listing fees or a bigger plan with like auto DS. So we're so easily able to adapt as drop shippers and just be able to add new and different products. So I agree completely, Mike, well said. I think that's an excellent point. <clears throat> does adding just backgrounds to photos make it your own? Um, I'm not really sure exactly what you're trying to do. But when you're listing products onto eBay, Tim, you most people just use the images given by the supplier. So like that's Walmart or Amazon or whoever. That means that you're using the same images as everyone else who's selling that same product. So one way around that is don't sell the same products as everyone else or sell products that not a lot of other people are selling. But another way around it is to change up the photos a bit. So you can create a collage of the photos. So let's say there's four good photos of the item, create a collage that has all four of those photos and use that as your main image. I made a video about how, kind of asking the question, can we use Midjourney, the AI art tool, to create new product images for us so we can have new images that stand out and are different from our competitors? My kind of conclusion of that was it does seem to work for some products, but for a lot of products, it's not going to work. It has to be really more generic products. So just keep all that in mind. Um, and all that stuff takes time as well. So creating collages take time, using mid journey takes time. Um, but just switching the main image 
from like a different one is pretty fast. And even creating your collages isn't gonna take you too long because I think that's built into AutoDS as well. Kred says eBay, oh, the eBay one to date is my favorite. He's speaking about the different product research tools for Facebook Marketplace. I'm so glad I found you. I'm glad that's that, you know, that's a pretty easy one to, uh, for most people to. Johnny's living in Tampa. Cool place. I love Tampa, Clearwater, St. Pete, Gulfport. Love that area so much. Probably go back there in the winter. Lee Thompson says, are customers bothered about receiving items in Amazon packaging from eBay? Yeah, so what Lee's talking about is, okay, you drop ship something to a customer on eBay, you order it from Amazon, and now it's gonna arrive to the customer in an Amazon box. I was really concerned about this too, Lee, when I started, and quite frankly, it turned out to be a non-issue. Most customers don't complain about this. Don't ever message me about this. Don't say anything about it at all. The overwhelming majority of customers are like that. My assumption is that they get a box on their doorstep. It's addressed to them, so they open it. Oh, that was the item I ordered. I'm happy I got it. That's it. They don't think twice about it. The other cool thing is that a lot of suppliers don't include the price in the box. Walmart doesn't do that. Home Depot doesn't do that. Amazon doesn't do that with a gift receipt. Wholesale suppliers don't do that. So most suppliers aren't including the price in the box at all. Now, it's true that the box will say Amazon on it. It will have Amazon logos and stuff like that. But I think the reason customers don't care is because they probably think that you're just reusing a box that you got when you order something from Amazon. That's my assumption. And I've told I've told customers that before too when, they've, when they have said something, which again is rare, and that seems to alleviate things as well. So I do have scripts inside my course for if a student, if a, a customer does complain about that, what you can say to them to kind of like calm them down and get them to not leave you negative feedback. But it is really rare that anyone ever complains about it. JR says, hey Paul, how scalable and sustainable is your drop shipping model for Facebook and eBay? Can I make a brand on those platforms? Thanks. So it's these are definitely very scalable business models because the overhead is so low with them. You don't need to buy new inventory to expand. You don't even need a lot of help, maybe just a couple or one virtual assistant to really expand. So it's just about learning the system and then once you do, you can replicate it over and over again and just use what you've already built to, to kind of uh, uh, you know build up going forward. So it is very scalable. And in terms of sustainability, like, like I said, I've been doing it since early 2017. I've been doing Facebook marketplace drop shipping. Well, I started that two years ago. So we do see sustainability with it as well. As for the last part of your question, can you build a brand on those platforms? You, it's very difficult to build brands on marketplaces like eBay and Facebook marketplace. And that's because they are marketplaces. It's where people go just to look for any product. So if people go on eBay, they want, let's say an electric scooter, they're gonna search for electric scooter. They oftentimes will see, hey, who's selling it? Let me just see if they have good feedback. But otherwise they're not clicking on the seller's name. They're not looking at what products they're selling. So if you only sold electric scooters on eBay, or you sold tons of different items like I do, and one of those items tends happens to be an electric scooter, it doesn't make a difference. Consumers aren't going to say, oh, Paul, well, he's selling an electric scooter, but he's also selling like cups and pool equipment and patio furniture, so I'm not gonna buy the scooter from him because he doesn't specialize in scooters. No, that's not what customers on eBay do, okay? They search for the item they want, they see it, and if everything works out in terms of if the price is right for them, it looks it's the right product for them, then they purchase it regardless of who's selling it uh, with the exception of maybe they look at the feedback of that seller. So there's really not a lot of brand power 
on marketplaces. If you wanna build a brand, you really wanna build your own website. Now, that's really hard to do as well, <laughs> okay? Building a brand on your own website and getting it known is really hard to do. So that's why I really like marketplaces. That's why I like selling items that people um, are already, some from brands that people are already familiar with or on marketplaces that those marketplaces themselves are a brand that people are comfortable and familiar with. Okay. Um, Miss Mia Mia Meow says, I have listed over 300 items already on eBay. I'm confused on uploading those items on AutoDS because these are physical in my inventory I ship. Thanks. Uh, so it sounds like Miss Mia Mia Meow is maybe looking to do drop shipping, but also sells some of her own products, products that she has in her maybe house or in a, or in a storage unit somewhere. On hand, she has them, not drop shipping. So if that's the case, those 300 items that aren't being drop shipped, you don't want to put those into AutoDS. You just want to don't connect those items up with AutoDS. Just leave them alone. You're going to price them however you want to price them, and that's it. You don't have to worry about anything else. Does AutoDS keep sales records, says Odima? Sort of. You can go into AutoDS and you can see what volume of sales you've done over what periods of time, but it's not going to show you your purchase history unless you kind of put that stuff in there. Um, yeah, it's it's not it's not something you can use to give like your CPA or your accountant or your bookkeeper, okay? It just kind of gives you a general idea of how your store is doing in sales over time. Gucho Design says, hi, Paul, thanks for your advice. What is the best percentage of profit margin, discounting product and shipping prices? The markup for your items really depends on the supplier. It depends on if you are tax exempt or not with your supplier. It depends on what your store subscription is because some store subscriptions have lower fees than others. So there's a lot of factors in there, but most people are looking to, to start around eight to 10%. You can go up from there, but you want to start low to really get the ball rolling. You know, the lower your prices are, then the more items you're going to sell, that's going to say to eBay, hey, this person makes sales, let's send them more traffic. That kind of triggers the algorithm. And then once you get sales going, you can you can raise your prices. Yeah, well, remember, just, just send us an email, paul at pauljlipsky.com. If you can't get into the course, uh, we'll make sure that you can. It's probably just a password reset that needs to be done. Um, so just send us an email, Wally, paul at pauljlipsky.com, and I will personally help you out. Mm. Mike says, show your appreciation. Hit the thumbs up button. Thanks for the reminder, Mike. Appreciate you. Um, I think I, let me check something real quick because I think I had something else I wanted to give you guys, but I'm not sure if I did it right. Oh, shoot. Um... Let's see. Yeah, so in the description of this video, I forgot about this. The first link, um, well, the first three links, I really put some freebies right up there at the at the top of the description. You can see those right here. So the first one, I just finished creating this dropshipping suppliers ebook. So that was it's supposed to launch really that ebook on Thursday, but I'm giving you guys like a sneak peek of it right now. If you want to know the the top suppliers that I use then you can download this ebook right here at this link. Uh, the second one is if you are looking to drop ship onto Facebook Marketplace, I give you 197 items that you can drop ship on Facebook Marketplace. So that's linked up right there as well. So a couple of freebies there. I mentioned this because this, this top drop shipping suppliers ebook is brand new. I just finished it yesterday. Um, so definitely check that out. All right. 
Uh, Debbie, I don't think I understood your question, I think was what happened. So maybe just repeat it. <laughs> uh, Dracul Demon says, how do you deal with customers who spam messages about shipping? Hi from Australia, all. Yeah, so it's annoying, right? When customers message you saying, hey, when is this shipping? Hey, did you ship it out yet? Hey, did you ship it out yet? Blah, 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 blah. When it comes to customer service, you can never take anything personally because if you do, you're gonna drive yourself nuts and you're going to end up saying something to the customers that, that you shouldn't be saying to them or responding inappropriately. No matter how bad customers are, you just always got to treat them with respect and just be patient with them. So I just send them a script saying we'll upload a tracking number as soon as it ships out. And then I, if I want to spend the time to do it, or if they're asking me a lot of questions over and over again, I will give them the date that is supposed to ship out by. I'll say eBay has allowed me to, uh, or according to eBay, according to your order, this item doesn't have to ship out till X date. I send out all my products on whatever day of the week that is. So you'll be getting a tracking number that day. Um, and just kind of leave it at that. Okay, Seagal says, hi Paul, thanks for everything. I'm learning how to use AutoDS. Which plan with AutoDS do you recommend for eBay and Facebook Marketplace to see and make it run smoothly? So the plans you wanna look at are the, you can go with the cheapest plan, but the cheapest plan that uh, skip the ones that are called import plans, basically. So the cheapest plan is called the import plan. You don't want that one, you want the next one up. Because the import plan, all it's going to do is send products to eBay or Facebook Marketplace for you, and it won't actually reprice or restock them. That's not very helpful, okay? You want the plan that will actually not only list items on eBay for you, but if the price changes on Walmart, it will update the price on eBay. If the item goes out of stock on Walmart, it will update the stock on eBay for you. That is what you want. So don't go with the starter plan, the cheapest one, go for the next one up. How much profit would you consider to be a good amount in a month? I don't know, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, what is it? what are your goals? And what, what do you wanna do with the money that you're making from drop shipping? If you want to replace your nine to five job, then a good amount of profit would be the same amount that you make from your nine to five job every month. If you just want kind of like to, you know, some extra money, then yeah, like a thousand dollars profit, even $500 profit or a few hundred dollars profit can make a big difference. Um, but it depends on you and, and what your goals are. But I really encourage people to get, to get serious about that and really think about what they want out of life and what they want out of drop shipping and set your goals accordingly, because that's the motivation that, that really keeps you going. For me, I wanted to quit my job. So having drop shipping as my path for doing that, that goal really motivated me to do well with it. So it's, it's, it's great to have goals like that, to really keep you motivated and keep you focused. Lee Thompson says, how much of a budget do you need to start drop shipping? And would you recommend starting on Facebook or eBay first? You really can't go wrong with either Facebook or eBay as a beginner. If you're looking to just get started, I would say eBay because eBay, it's very beginner friendly. They're both very beginner friendly, but eBay has a longer track history, more success stories with eBay uh, over the long run. Um, not that there's not amazing success stories with Facebook Marketplace as well, but um, most people start with eBay is what I'll say. So I would start drop shipping there. And um, how much of a budget you need? Not much, not much. Um, in terms of running it, you just need AutoDS, which is like, what, like $20 a month or something like that. And that's about it. Um, Zeke Analytics is gonna help you out a lot, but it's not necessary at first for doing product research. But AutoDS, I would say definitely is, you want that right from the beginning. <laughs> Tim said, you said that Banggood returns are hard. 
I was just wondering what the no reasons return, a new feature that helps with that, or so I'm not quite following you, Tim. Are you saying that Banggood has a new policy? If they do, I'm not aware of it. So maybe you can clue me in on that. Let me try to do some quick research on this Banggood return policy. The issue I had with Banggood, um, even though I thought they think they're a great supplier overall, the the problem I have with them is even for a product that I tried to return once, it's just such a pain because you have to, they first wanted pictures of the item, they wanted a video to prove that it didn't work, then the whole return process, they're like, well, instead of shipping it back, I'll give you 50% discount. I was like, well, no, it doesn't work at all. Like, I don't want 50% discount because this product doesn't work at all. And then it's just like such a back and forth with them. It's not gonna work for eBay sellers. They're just gonna be get sick of it. Um, oh, I see. So Banggood looks like they have, and this may have been the policy in the, in the past. I just don't, I don't remember it that well. Um, seven day dead on arrival product guarantee. If it arrives damaged or non-functional within seven days of receipt, we'll reimburse you the return shipping cost. Okay. Nothing groundbreaking there. 30 day, no reason return. If you're not satisfied with your purchase and the product is still in brand new condition, you return it for a refund within 30 days. You should bear the return shipping fees. There we go. So that is part of the problem right there. You will bear the return shipping fees. And if you're shipping these things over to China, you know, that's not nothing, the shipping cost. And it's not a pain, and it's gonna be a pain to do it all for an item that maybe cost you like 10 bucks. Is that really worth it? I don't know. I think it's more of a pain than anything else, which I think is what they're kind of hoping for so that they actually don't get a lot of returns. That's kind of my issue with, with Banggood and other suppliers where you're drop shipping from China. And, you know, I've talked to a lot of people that drop ship from AliExpress and Banggood and all these other websites coming from China. A lot of them say they, they will just refund customers. They, or they'll say, Hey, can I just refund you 50% and you keep it? kind of get like a half off discount. They'll try stuff like that, but they just don't return the items to to China because it's just too much of a hassle and it's, you know, too much of a pain. Um Carrier Carrier Wright says eBay's given me until the end of the day today to supply labels for, for two returns, but AutoDS says 48 hours. Today's a deadline. What to do? Um, so a couple of things is contact AutoDS and try to get that right away. Oops. Um, and if you can't get it right away, sometimes even though eBay gives you that deadline, nothing happens after it passes, but that's risky because something could happen. So um, uh, that's, that's what you gotta do. You gotta reach out to AutoDS about it. Miss Mia Mia Meow says, thanks, you answered my question. Where from he is reading comment? I can't connect to him. You did, you're doing it right. Your comment's in the right place. Is Facebook drop shipping hard? No, no, I wouldn't say so. I would say it's, it's definitely one of the simpler ways to sell online. I mean, you're selling on Facebook Marketplace. If you have a Facebook account, you already have Facebook Marketplace. So you don't even have to sign up for another website. And the the traffic's already there. There's already customers there. You don't have to build a website. You don't have to buy products up front. So all that's taken care of for you. It's just about doing product research. That's like product research and optimization is all you have to do as a dropshipper on eBay or Facebook Marketplace. So those are skills you have to master. So that part is hard. But the rest of it, everything else just kind of falls into place after that. It's just all about product research. Like that is what all you have to master really. Julie says, do we have to worry about a customer swapping out the product during their return? If a customer wants to return a defective product, swap out their bad one for the good one they just received. Is this a worry? If so, how do we handle this? So that's called return fraud. That is against the law. You know, that's basically stealing. You're not allowed to do that. So um, the good news is that 
we don't have to worry about this as dropshippers. Yes, this certainly happens, although it's probably rare, but it does happen. And who bears the brunt of that? The supplier. It's not going to, I've never had a supplier say to me, hey, you returned the wrong item. You returned a different item. So we're not going to refund you. That's never happened to me. So if return fraud has happened on any of my sales, which I'm, I'm sure it has at some point, but I'll never know it because the item doesn't come to me. It goes right to my supplier. So that is who bears that loss is a supplier and not you. <clears throat> JMC says, hey, Paul, what will be the best supplier to use for a newbie on eBay? Is it Amazon, Walmart, or AliExpress? Well, I'm so glad you asked because I have a free download, a free ebook that goes over the best suppliers to use for your eBay dropshipping store. For a limited time, you can get it absolutely for free at the first link down below. Click it and you get that PDF ebook instantly sent to your email. So all kidding aside, I just created that yesterday and it's available now. So go ahead and check it out. Just saying hello, what's up Patrick Marketer? For those of you who don't know who Patrick is, check out his channel because he also makes videos about drop shipping and Facebook Marketplace and eBay and has a lot of new content on Etsy as well. So definitely subscribe and check out his channel. Sigal says, do you have a detailed video on how to set up AutoDS with eBay and Facebook Marketplace from soup to nuts? It's a bit confusing with the settings point of view. Yeah, I do, but to be 100% honest, that video is only available or those series of videos are only available inside my courses, my eBay course and my Facebook Marketplace course. So I don't have any videos on YouTube showing how to set them up. And one reason for that is because I can't give away everything for free. You know, students pay for access to information like that. And the other reason is because AutoDS is changing all the time. My dropshipping um, theories and uh, strategies are changing all the time. So the settings I use today for AutoDS are different than the ones I used two or three years ago. So if I make, made a video three years ago showing how to set up AutoDS, or anyone made a video three years ago showing how to set up AutoDS, it's probably, it's definitely out of date now. So the videos inside the course, I update videos like that all the time. Anytime my settings change on AutoDS, I delete that video from the course and make a new one showing the new settings that I use. So I'm able to keep that up to date, but I can't take, keep YouTube videos up to date. My pleasure. How much profit did you make in your first month of drop shipping? Um, I don't remember, to be honest, Lee Thompson. I used to have a blog back then before I had my YouTube channel, but that blog doesn't exist and I don't have archives of it because it wasn't a very uh, uh, successful blog that people actually read. Uh, but I, I don't remember. It was it was not too much, though. Yeah, Wally, well, just send me an email, paul at pauljlipsky.com. Or... Well, you just go to my website and on the bottom will be a, a chat bubble. So this is, this is for anyone. This is helpful for anyone who like wants to get in contact with me. Uh, let me first go to the website. Um, I don't know if this works on this work here. Yeah, there we go. So on my website, on the bottom right of pretty much every page of my website is this chat bubble. And this chat bubble will allow you to chat with me. Um, it's with me. It's not with a virtual assistant. It's with me. Uh, right now it says you'll have to send a message, but that's because I'm live right now and I'm not available for the chat. But once the chat's, sorry, once the live's over and I open up the chat again on my computer, then you'll be able to chat live with me. So I am usually have it open because it's also on my phone, but I think because I have do not disturb on it automatically turned off. Um, uh, yeah. But normally you can chat with me right there. That's honestly the best way to chat with me because I don't even I don't even have Instagram on my phone anymore. I, I do check it every day if you want to send me an Instagram message. And I do check my email a couple times a day, but that is usually pretty instantaneous, that chat. <clears throat> 
uh, you can find it on the drop down for that item, the tracking number, and they should up they should upload it to eBay automatically. So you could also check eBay. Stacy says, I'm using Zeek for item research. Most times Zeek sends a message that an error has occurred, but it turns out the item description is too long. I'm not following you. When, which product research tool are you using on Zeek Analytics that is showing you the item description? Um, I've never seen this problem, JMC. JMC says, Auto DS auto ordering isn't working with promoter listings. I haven't seen that problem. I would reach out to their support and see what's going on. Um, Michelle says, when did you decide to get a virtual assistant? Was it when you had money to cover it what with what was selling or before and pay them with your bank account? So this is a really personalized choice. Uh, for me, it, it wasn't about money I was making, because after all, if I was making like $300,000 in profit a year, let's say, right? But I wasn't doing any work to do that. It was like one hour of work a day, then I don't need a virtual assistant for that, right? That's easy. Um, but if you're making uh, you know, good money, but you're working non-stop to make that money, that's when you might want to consider getting a virtual assistant, right? That's what I did. I, my first year in business, I was working a full-time job and on the side doing all of this, you know, creating an eBay store and scaling it up. I would do that in the mornings, lunch breaks, night, weekends, as much time as I could spend on it, basically working like a hundred hours a week in, in total between everything. So I got to a point where I just couldn't grow it anymore. I didn't have, I physically did not have enough time. So I had to hire a virtual assistant to help. I had them fulfill orders for me so I could free up time to actually list products. Um, that's what it came down to for me. It was really time. Um, Mark says, how long Will you keep an eBay listing active that isn't selling before replacing it with a new potentially better listing? Uh, about 30 days. If it if it's hasn't sold, I delete after 30 days, basically. Gerardo says, do you recommend selling the same items I drop ship on eBay onto Facebook Marketplace? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a really easy way to find products to sell. If a product is selling well on eBay, there's, there's a good chance it's going to sell well in Facebook Marketplace. It's not a guarantee, but there's a good chance that it's sell, gonna sell well in Facebook Marketplace as well. So yeah, I would definitely do that. What is the name of your friend and his channel that does Amazon uh, FBA? So w JR, what you can do is go to dropshippingtitans.com forward slash E2A, E number two A, and that will give you all the information about it. Um, maybe I could just put it up on the screen. How do I do this? E2A. Yeah, because that has all the information about it. Assuming I typed that link out correctly. Let, let's check if the link was typed out correctly. Cool. Yeah, so that's it right here. This is everything about it. I'll also put this uh, in the description for you as well. And he has a chat bubble as well. So if you have any questions for him, you can chat with him right there. Cool. Okay. Um, man, Mantvidis says, how many products is realistic to monitor manually? I mean, price changes, quantity supplier, and how often to review? Yeah, if, if you're doing things manually, it is going to be <clears throat> really hard to 
to check all those items. That's that's the hardest part about manual listing or manual drop shipping. Um, it's really hard to keep up with that, especially or really in particular when you're drop shipping from retail websites like Walmart or Amazon or eBay or Walmart, Walmart or Amazon, I should say, because those prices tend to change often. They have sales, they have discounts, promotions, things like that. If you're drop shipping from wholesale suppliers, that's less of a concern because they tend to not change their prices very often. They have more consistent pricing. So if you're gonna do retail stores, I would I would get software. Just don't stress out about it. Lee Thompson says, I got my eBay account permanently suspended when I was 16 for selling virtual goods. Is there any way I can appeal it or bypass it to sell on eBay? So Lee, my recommendation to you is, I don't know how old you are now, but if it's been a few years, and especially if you've moved, maybe you're, you're away at college and you have a new address at college, or you've just moved out of your parents' house or whatever, then I would try again. I would try setting up an account again because there's a good chance, you know, a, a better chance, I should say, that your new account's going to be fine in that situation since there's been some time and a new location as well. Um, yeah, sweet, awesome, Debbie. Lee says, is there a tool like Zeek Analytics that works for Facebook Marketplace drop shipping? Um, no, not really. Facebook doesn't reveal in any sort of way, really, the sales data for items being sold there. there. So with Zeek Analytics, we can see really what the most popular items on eBay are. We can see if there's another drop shipper and how often they're selling items and what their most popular items are. That information is not really available to us on Facebook Marketplace. So that's why we use eBay as kind of like a guidepost. Because if, like I said before, if an item's doing well on eBay, it's probably going to do well in Facebook Marketplace as well. Um, or there's a good chance, I should say, it will do well in Facebook Marketplace as well. Jeanette says, I just received my first bad review. They didn't like the product. Will this, will that really affect my store? It shouldn't, you know, one negative review shouldn't be a big deal. You can, if this is eBay, you can try calling eBay and say, hey, look, this is a product review and reviews are really supposed to be more a review of my store. The reviews are supposed to be a review of your customer service, how quickly you shipped out items, things like that. If they're unhappy with the product and it's a review of the product, it doesn't belong there. So you can call them and make your case. They, they should remove it, but they might not. You might have to call a few times um, to actually get it removed. Um, Semi says, my eBay account is restricted temporarily. They asked me to provide proof of delivery. Some items are not delivered yet, but tracking numbers uploaded. Uh, you should wait till all of them are delivered. Yeah. If that happens, just wait to see that all the items have actually been delivered. Yes, yeah, certainly it's possible. It's possible to make any any amount of money. Uh, realistically, you know what I mean? It depends on, on you and how many stores you have and how much work you have and your experience and things like that. Um... Should I upgrade to the 800 in AutoDS? I got the 400, started with low selling items. Um, if you max it out, yeah, you can go ahead and list more items. I would do that for sure. My pleasure. JMC says, my eBay account is old. My feedback 0% though, because I got a few negative comments. Uh, I wanna start over again. Yeah, you're not really supposed to start a new eBay account for that reason. Um, you can try and see what happens. 
And if you do, just keep this account in good health. You know, keep your feedback up so it doesn't happen again. Uh, you don't want to kind of run into that issue again. All right, so that's all we have time for this week. And that actually is all the questions. We got through all of them. So I wanted to remind you guys that in the description underneath this video are some links to some freebies I created, uh, a list of the best suppliers to use for drop shipping, and another list of about 200 items that you can start drop shipping on Facebook Marketplace. So you can check out both of those free eBooks down in the description. Thanks so much for the questions. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next week for the next live Q&A. Bye for now.